Because in 12 tone music, 6 plus 8 equals 2. Welcome to the last part of Allison's Brief Guide to Music History. How the time has flown. <laughs> so sad. Today we discuss the last and current period of music history, the 20th slash 21st century. We haven't really named it yet. So let's start where we left off last week. The Romantic era was full of tonal expansion, emotion, and around the turn of the 20th century, it became very experimental. If you watch the video about Richard Strauss, which will be about right here, then you will see that he really pushed tonality and subject matter to whole new levels of ambiguity. The 20th century began, and really continued to be, composers looking for what the next big style of music would be. Everyone went in some really crazy and avant-garde directions, so for this video I'm going to organize by style. It may get a little bit confusing because there's a lot of composers and a lot of different styles, but I'll be putting an outline down in the description so hopefully you'll understand what I'm talking about. So let's begin with post-romanticism. Post-romanticism essentially does what Strauss exemplified, just a decline of tonality with a greater focus on intellectual and ethical purpose of music. The biggest composers of this group were Richard Strauss, Gustav Mahler, one of my all-time favorite composers, and Jean Sibelius. Next, we're looking at Impressionism. This movement moved, <laughs> movement moved, anyway, this movement moved against the overly romantic and epic style of the romantic and instead considered art and music to be a sensual experience with subtlety and charm. As you could probably tell, this movement started in France with Claude Debussy. Other composers of this style around the turn of the century were Maurice Ravel and Manuel de Falla. The movement continued into the middle and late 20th century with works by André Caplet and Olivier Messiaen. Um, and Messiaen wrote a lot of really cool pieces about nature and used birdsong in them. Primitivism was a short-lived but very explosive style of music that was inspired by the origins of music. The two big composers of this style were Sergei Prokofiev, and Igor Stravinsky. The most famous primitivist piece is Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring. This was a ballet that depicted the ancient traditions of the Russian steppes and involved a sacrifice of a young girl by dancing her to death. The music is very percussive and the rhythms and melodies are based on tonal center rather than tonality. One of the biggest developments of the 20th century was the use of atonality. The movement came out of Romanticism with the composer Arnold Schoenberg. Schoenberg developed something called the 12-tone composition technique. In this system, Schoenberg would number each note in an octave and then write melodies using every one of the notes with no repeats. The result was a complete disruption of tonality. But interestingly enough, Schoenberg saw himself as just the continuation of post-Romanticism, but really, he started his own style of music. His 12-tone system was developed in 1921, and he taught his two students, Anton Webern and Alban Berg, to use the system as well. It really took off in popularity amongst classical composers after the Great War, or World War I, because people were really looking for order and system after the chaos of that war. Really though, one of the biggest things that changed classical music was the invention of recorded music. People could now buy recordings and play it within the privacy of their homes. They didn't have to go out to a concert if they wanted to hear great music anymore. While this was great for the distribution of music, it really sucked for classical music and new performances because people were listening to older pieces that were already established as being great instead of looking for new works to interest them. This also led to the massive market of popular music, which is another video for another time. Let's just say that the masses no longer really cared about new classical works or even classical music at all. The increasingly high level of sophistication in these new pieces made it really difficult for the average audience member to really comprehend what was going on. On that note, let's discuss Futurism. Futurism is a movement that started in Italy and found its way to Russia. The main idea of Futurism is that noises of all kinds can be used in music. Some examples might be you know, street noise, or clattering pans, or even an alarm going off. The idea is that since these noises are a part of everyday life, they have an impact on the listener. One of my favorite things to come out of Futurism is the prepared piano. Composers would prepare their piano by putting 
nails or erasers or, you know, paper clips under or around or on strings of the piano. They would then map out where they placed all these things so that when they wrote their composition and sold it for other people to perform, these players would be able to completely recreate the prepared piano that the composer had used. We are currently listening to an amazing prepared piano piece by John Cage, and as you can tell, it doesn't really sound like a piano at all. Another movement is neoclassicism. This was another reaction to the chaos of the Great War, and it involved an attempt to go back to the forms of 17th and 18th century music, but with modern tonal techniques. Some famous composers of neoclassicism are Maurice Ravel, again, Igor Stravinsky, and Paul Hindemith, who taught composition and theory at Yale, interestingly enough. He also created his own system for musical composition, and I will definitely be doing a video about that someday. We've been listening to his piece, Matisse der Mahler. Expressionism was a major trend in music from around the turn of the century till 1930. This was essentially a reaction to Impressionism, and it stressed the emotional power of music and the way it could affect a person's subconsciousness. Some big Expressionist composers include Gustav Mahler again, Alexander Scriabin, and Charles Ives. After World War II, Expressionism had something of a rebirth, with later composers Pierre Boulez and Hans Henze getting their hands in there. Another style of music is postmodern music. Championed by John Cage, this style used elements such as irony and, interestingly enough, chance. Cage wrote pieces that would rely so heavily on chance that you would have to figure out what you were playing sometimes by flipping a coin or going to look up certain things in a book. Very cool stuff. We've been listening to his piece 4 minutes 33 seconds. And if you can't hear anything, it's not because you're crazy or because I forgot to put the background track in. It's because this piece instructs the player to not play anything for the three movements that total up to be 4 minutes 33 seconds. Instead of hearing music, you're supposed to hear the other sounds in the hall or the ambient noise that comes in, so it can also be something of a joke. <laughs> One of the later movements of the 20th century that is definitely prevalent today is minimalism. Minimalistic music is basically stripped down to the bare bones of what makes music. There's a lot of techniques like repetition and something called phasing, and phasing is where one musician will play a melody at one tempo, and then another musician will play the exact same melody but at a faster tempo, and they'll just keep playing, keep playing until they eventually come into phase with each other. Some big names of minimalism are Arvo Pert, Philip Glass, Steve Reich, and John Adams. Honestly though, the 20th century can really only be classified by being unclassifiable. There are so many styles and techniques that it's really hard to pin one down as being the prevalent or defining movement of the period. I hope you guys enjoyed this brief guide to music history. From now on, videos will focus on one interesting thing instead of just this huge mass of information. Phew! Okay, thank you all for watching, and if you learned something, please like and subscribe. Bye bye now! Bye bye! Music